Hey folks, it's John P with Geek Beat. We are continuing our streaming across America to uh, on our way to CE Week in New York, and we stopped here in Baltimore. We decided we were gonna go visit Fort McHenry, the home of the Star Spangled Banner. Let's go take a look. Here we are inside the fort, and as I was mentioning before, this is the home of the Star Spangled Banner. It's an interesting story, okay? So what happened was, there were a thousand people in here defending this star-shaped fortress, and the British and Spanish were, uh, I mean, the British and French were having a war, and it was going on out there. The U.S. was trying not to get sucked into it. Well, an interesting thing was happening out in the bay out there. Francis Scott Key was on a peace boat from America, out there negotiating the release of someone who, uh, the British weren't happy with and uh, they said okay we'll let him go but we won't let you go yet because we're about to attack that fort and so Francis Scott Key was sitting there and the British laid siege to this fort because they really wanted to just go ahead and give the Americans a, a butt whooping uh, but they had to get by this thing because it sits right at the mouth of the bay and there was no way to send a boat into the harbor without going past these gigantic guns that are in this star pattern around here. So the British bombed this facility for like 25 hours straight, but then they finally gave up because they decided, eh, it's never going away. And the Star Spangled Banner was written by Francis Scott Key when he was sitting on that boat, watching all this go down. And uh, he was just inspired because that flag was still standing when it was all said and done. If anybody's gonna try and take this fort, there's only two ways to do it. You can do it by sea or you can do it by land. Well, this is how you'd have to do it by land. That is the front door, if you will, to the fort, okay? Now this field is what would be uh, the only path that you could take to get in the front door. And so what they've done is they've put this big bastion, this giant uh, building right here in the middle, so that if there was a big enemy force approaching by land, it would have to split up and take routes around it. Now you can imagine there would be people up in there with guns shooting downward. There'd be people along these uh, uh, walls and there would be cannons pointed that direction so they just cut everybody down in the middle. Okay folks, check this out. It's a barn. No, wait, it's not a barn. Here's what I want you to see. It looks like a barn. It's probably the size of a barn, but notice all the bricks all the way to the top and the brick from here all the way over to the door. Now come on in and look how small this room is. Okay, the room is just a little wider than my arms. That's because the brick, I mean the walls are probably 10 feet thick all around because this is the powder room. Okay, so imagine this, we're at the front door, all the cannons are out there, all, you're sitting out there manning the cannon and they say, hey, we're getting shelled from out of range, go get in the bomb shelter. You're gonna be running in here and going down there. Come on, let's see it. Okay, we got a lot more to see, but we're gonna go in here and take a look at the Ravelin in just a minute, and you're gonna see why that's so awesome. By the way, I just wanna take a minute and thank our sponsor, GTEC, for sending us from Dallas all the way to New York, including this awesome stop at Baltimore. So, uh, thanks guys, and by the way, go check out the G Connect if you don't have one yet, we've been using it. Let's go take a look inside now. So this is the Ravelin magazine. You can imagine that when they're defending the entrance, they've got to have their own fortifications and supplies here in case this were to get um, encircled by enemies. So they, the guys can come in here, they block those doors off, 
and inside they've got their own power room and all kinds of other supplies so that you can have kind of a little mini force here. What I think is so awesome is you've got entrances from both sides as you can see because Mark was coming down the camera that way and I came this way and there's all kinds of little cubby holes and hiding places they can come down, come down under here. I mean, pretty much you could defend this place. You can imagine me as sniper sitting down here, um, defending from this side with another guy on the other side. I mean, it's they really, really put some thought into how this entire fortress was defended. A lot, a lot of detail. Okay, let's go take a look at some more stuff. Okay, we talked about the uh, two ways that they could attack this fort, one by land, the second by sea, of course. And here's what I was talking about. If you look that way, you can actually see the shore across the harbor. Well, if, if you need to get a, a boat into Baltimore, you're gonna have to come through and pass in front of these bad boys right here. That is a ridiculously large cannon, and it's 50,000 pounds worth of cannon there. It's just, just not the kind of thing you want to pass your boat in front of. So these are what the uh, British were sitting way out there, just out of range. It just so happens that the British cannons on their ships, while not as heavy as this, had slightly more range. They, they had about maybe a quarter mile additional range. So they were bombing over here, but these bad boys were still there at the end of the day. And that's all she wrote. So uh, you really, really, if you're in the Baltimore area, you should definitely come over here to Fort McHenry and check it out. We, however, are going to leave this place and continue on up to New York. Have fun.